up, Sam Manix, and welcome to a special quick win because today we're celebrating the new version of Ionic version 6.2. So don't fear, this is no major breaking update, this is just a minor update, but it actually contains a lot of interesting updates, especially towards the Ion Daytime component. So I want to walk you through all the uh, changes. You can simply install this by installing the latest Ionic version. So nothing of this should break your code or will break your code you will only benefit from bug fixes and additional components and new features for some of those components as always you can find the link below the video for all ionic academy members and if you're not yet a member of the ionic academy you should definitely check it out ionicacademy.com my place to help you with everything ionic but now let's dive into the latest version of our awesome ionic framework All right, let's go through the changes of Ionic version 6.2. We're gonna go through the blog post and we're gonna similar write a bit of code for the new features. So first of all, we got daytime multiple date selection, which means we can have this cool daytime component and select different dates. So in order to do this, let's start with a blank new Ionic application. Actually, I went to the nightly build because there was also a little fix, but should be fixed and released uh, once you get to this uh, version 6.2.2 uh, will be fine. Um, for this, let's add a variable that we call selected dates. And actually, we're going to use this again in the future. And then we're going to add a function. Uh, let's say show selected dates. And this will get an event from our ion date time. Uh, and then we'll just set our selected dates to e.detail. Actually, I think we could use like the custom event or uh, what is it called? Ion custom event. Yeah, something like this. Ion range. Ion. Actually, it should be Ion daytime custom event, right? Shouldn't it? Um, oh, you don't like that? Generic. Ooh, probably it's also not the type of we were looking for. Ion daytime. What is this called? Like they had custom events for pretty much everything. Ion alert, Ion menu, custom event. So in my eyes, it actually should be the Ion date time custom event. Um, Ion date time custom event. What are you not liking about this? I need a type. What is this? Uh, I don't know if I actually ever used this before. Um, what do you specify here? Like any? <laughs> And will this work? This won't make any difference, right? Uh, so probably let's just keep it to E and E detail and value should hopefully print out uh, our result. Um, now let's begin. What was the point? Uh, daytime multiple date selection. Fine. For this, let's add a daytime component into our view. Ion date time component. Uh, I'm going to set the presentation to um, date. And we're going to set multiple to true. This is actually the most important part here. So then we already see that I can select multiple dates on this component, which is pretty cool. Um, in order to display our result, uh, I'm just going to add an ion card here, uh, which shows our selected dates uh, as JSON. And now we just need to trigger the according function. And we can do this either with a button or we can just use the ion change event um, of the component here and set this to show selected dates passing in the event. Anyway, I always get a problem here uh, when I use an event and have a type for E in here. So yeah, let's just keep it like it is. And let's give this a try. Oh, this even works on immediately. This is cool. Uh, I thought this wouldn't work immediately, but turns out if you use something like show default buttons true, then it won't emit immediately. So then it will wait until you click the button. Anyway, what I wanted to show is that we can select multiple dates and either with done with the default button or without it, we're now able to get an array of those selected events. Um, be aware. Uh, let's quickly check this out. What did we use? We use multiple. Yeah, that was certainly not the right multiple. Multiple date selection. 
Um, this property will only support when using presentation date and prefer wheel fault. We'll get into this later. This is actually the default, but be aware only multiple works with the presentation style date. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next part, which is the wheel picker. Yes, we got the wheel picker back. You've been asking for this and Ionic answered and there we go. So um, to implement this, uh, we're gonna keep it. Do we wanna keep it? I don't think we want this. Uh, let's also change the presentation to date minus um, time. Then we have, where is date minus time? Um, this doesn't really look like date minus time, is it? Uh, anyway, um, the key is prefer wheel and we're going to set this to true. Actually, I like to surround it with brackets if I'm using true, which is an object. And then we see we still have no wheel. Uh, why do we know where's our wheel? Hello, my friend. I wanted to have the wheel. Uh, I think it's actually, I think it's actually prefer minus wheel. No, what is it? Prefer minus wheel equals true. Uh, and presentation date time. Oh, you actually, yeah, I messed up the presentation. I'm sorry about that. So there we go. Da -da, we have a nice wheel. Yes, you've wanted this and you of course get it back. My selection logic still works. This is nice. Uh, probably, how does it look without this? Uh, it immediately emits. That's also cool. That's also cool. And I wonder if I have to use prefer wheel like this or if I can use prefer wheel true like this. Yeah, this feels a lot better with Angular. I don't, I don't really like the dash in here. Uh, also for the presentation, my problem was I passed it like this and then I would have to use it as an object. Nonetheless, this is just a bit of Angular and TypeScript stuff. So, prefer wheel, we got a wheel picker with version 6.2. We also now got a daytime compact style, which is very, very interesting. So, um, let's comment this out. We might need it again. And what we can use now instead is an ion item. And I'm gonna add an ion label in here. Let's say select date. And I encountered this problem myself in the past with version six and thought, well, this is probably not the best way. Now, watch out for this. We have a new component called ion date time button. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, this will go to the end slot. Actually, you can use it in every place that you want to. And this is now connected to a specific date time instance. So right now it won't work because we need a way to trigger this date time. And for this, you can use an inline modal like this. Uh, the only thing we need is ng template in here and then an actual ion date time. And I'm gonna copy this in. So here we got another ion date time, show default buttons, ion change, just like we had before. Actually, we can once again get rid of this. And now the magic happens when I use the ID of our date time here, up here. So I could also use the ID Simon in here. Um, just make sure they match. And then uh, we have no ion date time instance found because what we also need to tell Angular is to keep contents mounted and set this to true. Now, why is this important? Um, let me bring in the documentation for this as well. Mounting inner cont uh, contents. Uh, this, this is like, yeah. The content of an inline model is unmounted when closed. If this content is expensive to render, developers can use keep contents mounted property to mount the content as soon as the model is mounted. So we need to use this property on either the ion model or something else to uh, allow our in daytime to actually find it. And now we have no more problems and we see we have a nice inline representation and I can now click this and the daytime opens in this model. This is exactly how I wished the daytime would work and now it works exactly like it should. So this is really, um, this is probably not the best way. I'm gonna show you something else for this, but like clicking on this button here, this ion daytime button somewhere. Uh, you don't have to use it inside an uh, ion item. You could have it pretty much wherever you want. So let me comment this out. Um, no, where did I go wrong? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, because I use slot end here. It's certainly not a slot. So I can just have it pretty much wherever I want and it will trigger the connected ion date time. This feels really good. Uh, once again, this representation in an ion item, I think this is like the standard. You have a form, you wanna select a date and uh, now you can pretty much just do it like this. If you don't want uh, time, uh, let's check out the documentation for the ion date time button quickly. Um, we got color date time disabled mode. Well, I think there's not a lot else, um, but I guess we have a date target and a time target. So if you're using one of those slots, you could probably hide one of those if you just need one. Or actually, I think probably it's dependent on the presentation of the actual date time. Hmm, that could be the case. So let's say I only have date here for the presentation. Oh yeah, then it's gone. Nice, nice catch. That's perfect, that's really perfect. Um, so what you see in the ion date time button depends on the actual ion date time, which is connected through the ID. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that it's called date time here and ID here. I think this could be a bit clearer, but uh, that's just really a minor detail. Okay, um, then also a little uh, additional thing, date time localized AM PM. Um, so let's go back to date or let's just use time in here. Uh, and then we should be able to see right now, we have no AM PM settings. If I set my local to, is it DE or is it Germany? I actually don't know. Okay, this doesn't display anything. Then I tried something like uh, for array big was like this. Yeah, so then it shows an automatic local in the local that I set. I could also set this to uh, US and that should show exactly AM PM. So a nice little addition. Uh, if you're using the local, uh, you simply get this for free anyway now. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, bottom sheet handle behavior. Yeah, that's a cool one. Um, so, you know, the bottom sheet, which is pretty cool. Uh, but let's get rid of a few, pretty much of everything in here and look at something else. So we can have an ion model uh, in line uh, triggered by a button. And I'm going to bring in this code that looks like this. So this was possible since version six to have this ion button with the ID connected to the trigger. Well, again, now we have ID and trigger. <sighs> and previously with the date time component, we had date time and the ID here. I think those elements could be aligned a bit better. So you always know what's going on, but just my uh, assumption. So uh, with the ion model, oh no, I completely forgot something quickly. Let me just go back one more time in, in time. Because what I wanted to show you with this selection is you can not only use an ion model, you could also simply use an ion popover if you enjoy it more. And then the presentation will be right here. Sorry that I forgot to include this. And I think this is really important because sometimes this looks better than the whole model. Uh, but anyway, still keep contents mounted is important. <laughs> Okay, that was a nice little addition. Now, back to this, back to our trigger. What we can do now is we can have this handle behavior. So without the handle behavior, we just have a regular bottom sheet. Uh, breakpoint two, initial breakpoint uh, is here. Then we can go to 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. That's just the behavior of our bottom sheet. Now, if we add handle behavior cycle, what we can do is we can click on this handle and it will automatically cycle through all the available breakpoints. I think this is like the, um, I think it's like the, the default in uh, native applications. Um, but I want to check if there's anything else to the handle behavior. Uh, defaults to none, which means the model will not change size or position when the handle is pressed. Set to cycle to let the model cycle between available breakpoints. Okay, so there's nothing else besides cycle, none, and undefined. Okay, cool. So if you want this, simply add handle behavior cycle and you get a nice something for free. Um, two more little things. Toggle on off labels. I found them actually quite interesting. So what you can do now with version 6.2 is enable on off labels true on an ion toggle and it will look like this it will show this little additional icon here so you see really something is active or inactive and i just made this one use the mode 
uh, material design. So we see the differences for uh, Android as well. I wonder if I can use enable, yes, this is more <laughs> the Angular way in my eyes. Um, not using this, this is pretty much um, just plain JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript usage. And this is how you should usually use it with um, Angular. And then there's one additional thing, and that is you can also set the um, range, the ion range to something specific with an active bar start. That means we have a range from zero to 10 and our active bar actually starts at five, so in the center. So that gives us this little UI addition. You can also see it here. Uh, so let's say you have temperatures, and it's gonna be hot, and in the opposite direction, it's gonna be cool. There we go. So I could play around with this, of course. I could also set this to three, and I highly recommend Angular use active bar start with brackets instead and then use whatever value you like. I don't know if I ever thought like, uh, I would really need this. <laughs> um, but eventually, if you get to that point where you need it, I think something like this can be really helpful. Now, to conclude this, um, you can also check out some of their discussion because they mentioned here, we recently released a request for comments and there are three discussions right here, uh, pretty interesting changes where you can leave your comments. And I also just wanna quickly bring up one more thing and that is um, Ionic version six was released uh, December last year, December 21. Uh, with a bunch of updates and so far we've seen two minor improvements, 6.1 and 6.2. And of course, they said they want to have more releases. So with the release of version six, we're adjusting our release schedule to better queen same with iOS and Android software. And they were gonna expect to see yearly major releases. And that means it is 2022, the second half of the year. We haven't seen a major update of Ionic. Um, I don't know if we will really see Ionic version seven this year, because I know in the past, they worked long on the releases and um, there was a beta phase and the release candidates and all of this took like a few months. So if they are going for version 7, a major release towards the end of the year once again, uh, most likely after a major um, iOS update, I guess, or Android, this means we might see version seven of Ionic later down this year. I don't know if they stick to their plan or if this is just like, yeah, we wanted to do this, but we probably failed. So no idea how far Ionic version seven is so far. Uh, but actually it makes me kind of happy to think about that we might see a major update to Ionic later down the year in the next six or five months. All right, and that's it for a quick update on Ionic. I hope you enjoyed the little code examples and the snippets uh, describing what actually changed and how it now looks in reality. I think all the daytime changes are pretty awesome. The wheel is great. The presentation with the Ion daytime button component is awesome. So those two are already like, they could be a major version change. And it's just a minor update. So I'm really looking forward and I'm excited to see if we're gonna see Ionic version 7 in the future or in, in 2022, they promise to have yearly major updates. So I'm really looking forward to what Ionic has to offer later down this year. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 100K, we're close to 50, so I'm pretty sure we can get to 100 in some reasonable amount of time. So let's help me do this. And of course, check out the Ionic Academy if you're not yet a member. Don't forget to update applications. It's just running npm install at Ionic Angular Latest or at Ionic React or Vue or whatever you're using. And then you can enjoy the benefits of the new Ionic version. With that in mind, I hope to catch you inside the next video. And until then, of course, Happy coding, no, it was wrong. Anyway, Simon.